What a beauty! Look at that. It's copper sink day. Thirty-six. So this is thirty-six. <laughs> it is thirty-six dead nuts. Seriously. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we got a scrap piece of metal. This is scrap. This is scrap copper. copper. Which is gorgeous. It's basically a drop that the steel company or the metal company had. They're like, oh, we got some extra pieces if yeah. you want to buy it at a discount. We're yeah. like, yes, we would like to buy it at a discount. And they're like, we can't even sell this stuff because it's got like little scratches yeah. on it, but we don't care. So that's pretty hilarious. We need exactly 36 width to do this. So that's 36. <laughs> so there's 25. And what was this dimension? We need 25 that way. How much do we have? Oh, more than this. this oh, nice. 30 and 30 three quarters. 30 and three quarters. Okay, so we'll we'll guillotine half or part that part off up to oh. the 25 inch mark. Plans! <gasps> this is the plans. All right, let's scribe it in now. Woo! Okay, so we're gonna go sneak over to my dad's metal shop. Well, no one's over there. Let's go. New Brian trick. Left bro. <laughs> Good job. Now that we have our plans all drawn out with cut lines, bend lines, and measurements, we set up to scribe onto the copper what we had planned on our paper. The goal is to. Oh, that's bad. This lighting Under. is terrible. <laughs> So basically the idea is to not waste this stuff because we're gonna do a nice little vessel sink for our bathroom out of the drop off of this sheet. So we wanna make sure that uh, we save some for that. And then we'll use the other little copper drops for other random projects. Heck yeah. So what we're using is we're using an awl. It's just a little pokey. Mm -hmm. a little pokey. And we got a T-square. Big T-square. And a brand new tape measure that doesn't retract without uh, you touching the button. It's right there. Let's see Scribe. Using the powered sheet metal shears, I followed along the scribe line, easily cutting the copper sheet to size. If you've ever tin whacked with manual sheet metal shears, these babies will be a vacation. Nice work. Oh. Nice job. I like that one. <laughs> That's a nice one. It's a nice little machine. Yeah, it's really tough to see. Tough to see. This is what Brian looks like when he's being overly accurate to make the cut. Notice how he lines up the copper in hopes of a laser accurate cut without actually using a laser. Cut the piece already. Pass. 10 by 20. Nice. Perfecto. Cool, so next up, let's look at these pieces. And we need to make two end flanges. Let's do that side up and that side up, because that'll flange back. So these need to be one inch. So looking at our plans here. Is that guy called again? This is called a scribe. Oh, that's a scribe also. So we got a one inch, 
Well, we got the scribe set to one inch. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a little, uh, a little screw in the end. And so basically all we do is we need a one inch box around the edge. There we go. It's right on the corner. And we'll cut that off. Bye bye. Perfect. That's like dead on. <laughs> I know. I have talents. I have talents you ain't ever seen. Oh yeah. Nice. Boom. Nice. There we go. Good job. Sweet. Next up, I'm cutting the corners off with the guillotine so it's nice and straight. We're gonna be sure to pick up our copper because that's actually worth something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go scrap some copper. It's, it's not, these little drops aren't gonna be worth much. <laughs> we might use them. Yeah. All right. There it goes. There's that. You want me to guillotine this one also? Yes. And then um, you'll uh, do the square cut. Okay. Yep. Cool. I think that's the right size. Okay, so next up, we've got our little corners cut off here. And now I'm just gonna cut the little square corners out on each side. With these bulldogs. Big bulldogs. Who let the dogs out? Oh, wow. this other one Brian's already cut the nice so dark Brian's already cut the nice angle off the corners and now I'm gonna cut oh wow that would be is. better light there it is <laughs> there's the light that amazing under lighting all right yeah so Brian's already cut the corners I'm Aaron cut this one match these corners up now match them up match them nicely oh, she does such a good job so these are the little end pieces that will go on the sides of the sink. Yep. And then uh, our other big sheet will have the whole shebang on it. Yep. Three sides. So this is the left and the right side. The idea we had was not to solder all eight edges. We'll only be soldering four. Probably four inches. Something like yep. that. Bye-bye. Like nice. There it is. Good job. Oh, I forgot to cut that one. <laughs> I thought I was done. Okay. 
So cool to do something you've never done before. Yeah, we've never made a sink uh, out of copper or made a sink out of anything, really. <laughs> Actually, we did <laughs> make that one sink out of the beer tub, the beer tub. Uh, for the pre-conversion. If yeah. you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. The loophole. Yes. RV title loophole. Okay, I'm actually done now. There it is. Good job. So that's the left and the right side. It'll be basically like this. Oh, that's huge. That's pretty good. Well, it's also bigger because we've got uh, our sides. seams cut off the side, so we'll break those and then uh, continue on. But we're gonna, before we break those, we're going to cut out the main sink area next. And then after that, we'll, uh, we'll start addressing uh, how we're gonna do the seams. Enough playing around, Garcia. It's time to get to work. Just gonna shake it for you. Oh, if you want all these drawings, we're gonna put them in Get Your Schoolie On. So anybody who's got access to that can have all of our drawings. You're gonna love it. Our sketched up plan showed us the overall dimensions the copper sheet needed to be. Following our plans, we started by measuring out our cut lines and bend lines, which we scribe or scratch onto the surface of the copper. For the first cut, we lightly hit the handle of the awl to make a small indentation on either side. These two dimples will align to either side of the guillotine blade. We used a T-square to mark out more bend and cut lines. Mr. Accuracy. So if we like doing these copper sinks. Let us know if you like yeah. this, what we end up doing in the comments. Because we might- And if you might, want a custom one. We might make them for others. We may do that. If other people think that they would want that, we may start making these, because this is a lot of fun. That's <laughs> so much fun. It's beautiful too. We probably couldn't do this without access to all these machines or else we would totally have to MacGyver something. So we are grateful. All right. So I lined it up directly on the scribe line, the edge of the box break. And then this is gonna be a square boxed edge coming up. So we want this to go this way. It's been 90. Let's see what that looks like. Let's see how that did. Let's see if that gave us 90. Nice. All right, so the next one. Pretty close to a 90. It's a little, little obtuse, but that's all right. So this is gonna be the flange that goes underneath the, the countertop. And then this is where the sink is gonna be connected into, and this will be the interior part here. So Aaron's gonna go and bend the next one. Check it out. Perfect. That looks really good. I took a few shelf glasses. Actually, I took all the shelf glasses. <laughs> nice. Let's see your vertical. Good work. Pretty good. Nice.
Yeah. Nice. That looks good. Perfect. I like this. That's cool, huh? That looks great. Good cool. Job. All right, now we're moving on to the challenging one. Yeah. <laughs> we got to figure out how to origami this big piece now. Let's go. <laughs> Next up, we scribed a line on the edge tabs where the seams will be bent. Doing this will allow the left and right sides to attach to this big piece, which is the front, back, and bottom of the sink. Now, we've never done something like this before, but after consulting our 2D sketch, theoretically, this design ought to work out. This piece is considerably bigger than the left and right sides, so we utilize both handles on the brake to align the copper. I'd have to say, we work pretty well as a team because all the bends went perfectly without a hitch. If we didn't have access to this brake and were to do this by hand, we could definitely make some of these bends with sheet metal pliers or a hand seamer. For the deeper bends, we'd probably put together a couple pieces of angle iron to get the job done. Regardless, just using a little creativity could get the job done. Right. And down just a little bit. Let's see how that looks, and if we need to do more, we can. I but I think that's going to be good. All right, pull yours, your handle also, because we have a lip to clear now. There you go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that is so cool. Look at the size of that thing. Well, it's, it's not going to be that big. No. It's going to be a little bit smaller. Because of the sides, yeah. but that's almost it. Yeah. And we won't worry about this top flange because the more we continue to bend it, the weaker it'll get. So um, when we go install it, then we'll we'll get it yeah. flattened out at that point. Cool. Cool. So now, now let's take it over the table and then dry fit the two pieces in. And then after that- uh, it's solder time. It's solder time, yeah. And oh. then if we want to pound it. Yeah. We're trying to decide whether we want to pound it. We shall see. We'll probably pound it. All right, let's go. I always get my way. Oh yeah. Oh. All right, so let's fit these pieces in. Using a putty knife, we loosen the hem bend on the edge of the sheet metal so that it would accept the right angle bend from the side pieces into the groove. Doing this creates something called a single flange. After one round of brazing, we'll bend that single flange up to create what's called a double seam. This is how we're theoretically going to make these seams watertight. At this point, we're not sure if this is actually going to work. Cross your fingers for us. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Holy smokes. And we'll fill all this crack with solder. Cool. And then we'll bend those up, which will snug in the corners. Cool, let's show them. That's heavy. It's like nice and sturdy. Yeah. Wow. That's what the other side looks like. Wow. So we still have yet to uh, bend these pieces up. Um, yeah. Hammers. That is freaking awesome. Look how big That's that gonna is. be super. Oh, I love it. It's a good size sink there. <laughs> Where's the tape measure at? <laughs> you can wash a baby in there. Wait. Oh, no. Don't, don't wash a baby. Don't wash a baby in there. 18 by 23. Shit. <laughs> Do we even need a laundry machine? Maybe. Okay, so now that we have it to this stage, we need to mark where we want the drain to be. Mm -hmm. Now we're just going to make a little dot where we're gonna put the center of our drain. So the center of our drain will be, it's gonna be in the left third of the sink. It's approximately right there. All right, well, there's a hole there now, so committed. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to make some scribe marks as to where the, we're gonna break the, uh, do an X break, but because it's an off center sink, we can't do a, a perfect X. So we have to do a improvised X. 
from the corners to the center of the drain area. So check this out. So I'm just putting the ruler in the very corner and going and then scribing to the approximately the center of the sink. I messed up on that one, but that's fine. So this line leads to the center dot that he just made. There we go. That looks good. Yeah, that looks really good. <laughs> this. Which direction? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready? Yeah, that's okay. Nice. That looks pretty good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Cool, that'll work. Now, one last one. And you're good on your corner? Yep. Okay. That's probably good. Yeah, why? Oh, nice. Cool. That's good enough. Okay. So that'll, that'll also make it stronger. Yeah. And also pounding it will make it stronger too. Cool, yes. That'll help for drainage because now it's kind of puckered down if you can see the bottom. That's awesome. An X break off center. So later when we get our, our drain, we'll uh, cut the hole here, but we're gonna leave that until that happens. Cool, huh? Yeah, we don't wanna cut the drain until we know exactly which drain we're using. Using the awl, we dimpled the seam to keep the single flange tight until we soldered and completed the double seam bend. doing stuff with fire, you should have a fire extinguisher. Especially in a wooden barn. Before brazing copper, it's a good idea to clean the surface with sandpaper until it's nice and shiny. This will help the solder stick to the surfaces of the copper sheet so that you're left with a watertight seam. Have you ever done this before? Nope. All right, time to get work. In all seriousness, when working with anything that is an open flame or produces sparks, we always have an ABC fire extinguisher within close proximity of us. This is considered a hot work situation. Remove all combustibles that are close by and cover any that you can't move with fire resistive covering. After completing the hot work, have someone perform fire watch and monitor the area to watch for any signs of smoldering fire for at least 30 minutes to an hour after hot work has been completed. Play safe, kids. No, not really. This seam did really good though. Yeah, I think we could remelt that from the inside and tip it. Yeah.
Plucks. Plucks. Get that plucks on there. Don't need a whole ton, but you need a little bit. First you need a little sand job. Rough up. Make it nice and shiny. And then the flux, then the weld. Or solder. So solder. Sick. That's pretty good. Yeah, it looks like you got the whole seam. <sighs> what do you think? I love soldering. <laughs> and it's really fun. This is a little bit more than soldering, it's brazing. 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 All right, well, I like brazing. That's pretty fun. Yeah. I mean, this is gonna be a little Frankenstein-y because it's our first time, but we're gonna smash the heck out of it with a ball peen hammer thing and make some dents in it and it's gonna look really slick. <laughs> How did you? Good, good, shiny, shiny, clean. I just sanded the, the perimeter. Edges, all these edges, rough them up a bit. So the, the weld will accept when you're all over that edge. Yeah, this time I'm gonna put it on um, this edge before we pound it in. Pound. That's probably good. That should snug it in while we solder. Yeah. Then we'll bend them in. After experimenting a bit, we found that preheating the copper seam caused the solder to melt faster and get sucked quickly into the seam by way of the capillary effect and gravity. You wanna um, get the vertical? Yeah. You having fun? I love this. This is probably one of the best things I've done in a while. Oh my gosh, this is so, so therapeutic. I love making stuff. Nice. It's doing a really cool thing, isn't it? Yeah. Woo! Let's go see how it looks in the box! We did it! <laughs> so other than having the structure of it made so far, the next things that we need to do is water test it. So we'll fill it full of water and see if there's any leaks, but we want to see what it'll look like in the space. Oh, oh my! Wow, so it's gonna be under mount right here. Oh, this is wonderful. It's huge. Look how beautiful that is. Whoa. And we're not even done with it yet. Like we still have to do the hammer work, uh, but this, y'all, this is freaking, this is beautiful. 
So it'll be under mounted on the counter that we install. Uh, probably similar to this uh, light walnut that we have. We're not really too sure what Live Edge we're gonna use because we don't have it yet. So we have to go shopping, uh, find some local guys who uh, have tree services and stuff. Well, they stock that stuff around here. So uh, we need to get stuff that's maybe like two to three years old that's already been cut. Uh, just sitting there for a couple years because the moisture content needs to be a little bit lower. Like we're looking at six to nine percent probably. Uh, so we might get one of our buddies who has a moisture meter to come with us and uh, go shopping for some countertops at some point. But look at that sink. Yeah. So we're going to have a uh, off center drain here. And then we've got it set up to flow down because you see the X break that we did. The the rigamajigged X break seemed to work pretty good for us at least. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's go get a bigger ball peen hammer. Yeah. This is fun. What the heck are you doing? Ball peen in, ball peen in. We're uh, camouflaging our seams. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, when you make dents in metal, the more bends and dents and such, the stronger the metal becomes, which is probably why most of the sinks that we've seen like this have had dents in them. Or I don't know what this technique is necessarily called, but it has that. It's the hammered look. Hammered. Hammered copper. Hammered copper. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's probably why you see that a lot because it actually makes it stronger. And a sink this size, it's probably a good idea to do that. Yeah. Non-hammered versus hammered. Cool. Pounding the copper was not a very fast process. We didn't put a bunch of force into it because we didn't want to accidentally break the copper. Having never done this before, we experimented with different amounts of force while hammering. different size hammer. I've got a 24 ounce ball peen. Yeah. That's why we flip sides. Also, it may be a good idea to flip sides because of technique. Yeah, um, she has a 16 ounce ball peen. Yeah, uh, Brian seems to be doing like more like straight, like linear patterns and uh, mine's more random. I'm so. doing, um, I do around the edges yeah. of where I'm at and then I start in one corner and then I do arcs. Uh, yeah. Like an arc pattern. Yeah. Like, see, he stays in kind of like a line where I'm like, bam, 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 like all over the place and kind of staggered. Um, so, yeah, it's probably a good idea to switch if you're doing it with a buddy. Yeah, yeah. Or a lover. Ooh. All right, back to it. Oh, yeah. What do you think? I love it. That thing is rich. Look how shiny it is. So cool. Wait till we buff it. Yeah. First, the water test. The water test is simply, does it hold water or not? If it leaks, we need to reconsider our solder bits. Yeah. Or brazed bits. A brazing, yes. So we're gonna go fill this up with water and uh, we've got one hole where the, um, where the drain's gonna be. We had punched a hole there just so that we can have a solid, solid center on it. Uh, so we just put a little bit of tuck tape on the top side or the inside of the sink and then also on the bottom because obviously that spot's going to leak, right? So we got that sealed up and then now we're gonna fill it full of water and see, uh, see what happens. Hope right. our handiwork was good. Yeah. Let's go. All right, so we're about uh, maybe about a quarter of the way full right now. There is absolutely no leaks in the corners. Oh, that is so good. Or on the sides. Dry as a bone. <laughs> I think this sink might 
be an official sink here in a second. DIY what? So we could have paid a thousand bucks for this, or we could make it for under 200. Yeah, all right. What do you think? I think that we're winning. I don't That's think we're- cool. Only took an afternoon, yeah. like a day. How many hours do you think we spent on this? I don't know what time we started coming out here. Uh, what time we come out here? Noon? Maybe eight hours. Yeah, maybe about eight hours so far working on it. That's eight hours well spent. Yeah. I think that's probably high enough. Yeah. Unless you want to go We're all the way. We're never going to fill this more than that. No. All right. The sink is, the sink is good. I think it, it was a success. I think so too. And the crowd good goes job. wild. Ah!